Hello, welcome to the Plot Malaysia. This is our 16th episode. This is the show for the fans. By the fans. It's all about the fans. It's all about the fans. Oh my, oh my. I mean, hurry, I got to tell you this, man. You know, I I I was I was not being able to sleep when I found out about the ESL going through. But I can tell you one thing: I am in all flying spirits right now, knowing that it's no longer going to be pushing through. All the six teams in the Premier League are not going to be participating in the league. Hurry! I I I am so ecstatic right now. I'm sure you are too. So tell all of us how are you feeling as well about this? Well, it's it's ironic, isn't it, Ram? We are the show for <laughs> the fans by the fans. Uh, yeah, and you can and you can actually see the power of the fans here, right? Uh, they have supposed yep. they had supposedly signed a 23 year commitment. Huge elite yep. clubs. They felt they said that they had all the legal uh, side of things covered. Uh, and what and, <laughs> and what and what ha- and what happens? Uh, fans get involved, and within 48 hours, everything collapses. Everything comes crumbling down. That's the power of the Hurry, fans. I got to say this: the power of the fans. And I got to say this, man. I think our voices as the plot Malaysia. I think the plot is everywhere, man. I think the plot is everywhere. <laughs> they heard the plot, bro. They heard about they heard the, plot. the plot. Yes. <laughs> well oh, done. Yeah. Well so, done. So that was a nice feeling, man. To uh, I mean, yeah, awesome. it's, it's, it's it's good to see the power of the fans. Uh, and it's, it's, fans, it's yeah. little at the end of the day, it's a very very small victory. But yeah, yeah. Uh, fantastic news uh, today when I woke up this morning. Uh, and in fact, now I think I heard uh, literally a, about half an hour or an hour ago that even uh, the I- Italian clubs have pulled out except for Juventus. So I yeah. think only three teams are left. It's Real Madrid, Barcelona, and Juventus. Good luck, guys. You oh, can't wow. even you can't even play semi-finals with three teams. Good luck with that one, Florentino <laughs> Perez. I think I think hurry. It's a good one. Three teams. They're going to be drawing lots. Who's going to play in the final? <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's what's going to happen. And we'll see how that plays out, like, You know, but uh, yeah, I think Perez deserves it, man. Especially after the sham of an interview he gave the other day about ESL yeah. saving football and all that kind of stuff, and about shortening the game. Like younger people <laughs> wanting a shorter football matches and stuff like that, so he probably deserves Why? that, line, you know. But yeah. of course, there've been other developments yeah. as well. I mean, you probably yep. heard Ram. Uh, I think uh, yep. I see you very, very happy. Ed Woodward's out. Oh, uh, so, so, yes. so, 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 so tell tell our viewers, tell me, man, what is what are your thoughts, bro? What are your thoughts about the crumbling of the ESL, uh, Woodward mm-hmm. going out, and and what what the future mm-hmm. holds for uh, Manchester United? I think uh, Hari, thanks for thanks for bringing that question up. I think I'm I, I'm especially I'm going to start by talking about Ed Woodwork, okay? Uh, Ed Woodward, sorry. Yeah, I'm going to talk about him. He is a woodwork after all. <laughs> the wood. <laughs> sorry, I, I, Ed Woodward. I yeah. know United fans no. hate him, bro. <laughs> we hate him. We hate him. Uh, I'm openly saying this because uh, you know we have watched so many times, numerous times. The fans are just going after him trying to say, hey, he's got to leave because he's never even pitched in a little bit when it comes to development of the club. He claims he does that. But honestly speaking, he's never done a single bit for the fans. You know, he's never done anything. And, you know, when it comes to buying players in the transfer market, he does not even give, uh, you know, his... I believe he was a bit stingy when it came to uh, spending the money. You know, I'm so glad I can say this openly right now because uh, I think all the fans would agree with me as well. All the United fans uh, would feel the same. Uh, having said that, having said that, I think this ESL development that uh, seemingly uh, it seemed possible for all the clubs to actually uh, take, uh, you know, this particular uh, competition. I think it's a blessing in disguise that it actually happened for that 48 hours or so. Uh, because when the decision was made that uh, ESL will not be, uh, I mean, these clubs will not be participating, uh, Ed Woodward was asked to leave. So the fans tried everything. Uh, Probably the people in the club tried everything. But to be honest, Ed Woodward was untouchable at that point of time. Right now, he is gone. But but, but, Ram, you you complain about Ed Woodward so much, but wasn't he the guy who brought Oli to the wheel? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> okay, I mean, to be honest with you, right? I wouldn't say it's entirely his decision. Yep. Okay, he can't take full credit of actually, uh, you know, saying that Oli is the one that uh, he brought Oli in, uh, you know, because like to the fans, he must have found a way. Okay, this is one way, uh, you know, the field back, back and so forth. And to be honest, because he brought Oli in. That's the only thing. If that's the only good thing that he did, that he did, you know, what about the rest of the things? You know, there's 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 nothing else to to say that you know is good enough for him to be in this position. He has just been so bad. 
He's been so selfish, so stingy, and it's time for him to go. And I'm so, so happy that he's gone. And having said about the ESL, you know how I feel about it? Oh my God. I am totally, totally, totally out for words. And I'm so happy. I think we did the show a couple of days ago regarding on how we felt about uh, entering the ESL. But look at both of us now, Hari. I mean, it's just, it's just brought light back to the situation. So yeah, you know, I'm, 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 I'm totally, totally amazed. I'm very, very happy. And mostly, mostly excited that Ed Woodward is gone. So yeah, what, that, that's how I feel, Hari. What about, the, what about going forward, man? So I mean... I mean, the Glazers have put United, I think, in, I think they've never been a big, uh, you guys have never been big fans of the Glazers anyway. They have put you guys in heavy no. debt as well. What's the future no. hold for the no. Glazers, man? Are you Glazers in, Glazers out? Where do you stand on that? And, and how, how strongly are you guys going to push for, uh, uh, for this, basically, for any sort of reforms? I think, I think there's a lot of trend going on uh, in social media right now, if you can see. It's ESL out, Woodward out, next will be the Glazers. So basically the fans are going all out to complete the treble, yeah. <laughs> so to speak, you know? Yeah. So, so I think, I think, yes, I'm at, I'm Glazer uh, out for sure. Okay. And uh, I just saw reports came in or rumors rather came in that, uh, you know, uh, McGregor, you know, wants to buy, <laughs> uh, wants to buy Manchester United. So <laughs> dream it's, on, it's, bro. It's, dream it's, on. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't know what to say to this. It could yep. be true. It could be not true. I don't know how true this is. But as far as I'm, I'm concerned, if we're going to have owners or possible owners that are going to be of, uh, of course, the British influence uh, who know the game of football, who love the game of football, then it makes a lot of sense, you know, uh, where they're not going to change anything just for their own personal gain. You know what I mean? Yep. Uh, the Glazers have, have been, uh, you know, doing it uh, for like, two decades now, you know, all they think about is just themselves. You know, uh, they have just tried to Americanize the whole game of football. And I don't think, I don't think it's just about Man United. Uh, I think it's also Liverpool, Arsenal, uh, you know, and all these clubs that have been uh, influenced by them, by them. And I'm going to say this again, I have nothing against Americans, but you know, it's, it's about trying to make drastic changes for personal gain. And I can't take that. I cannot stand for this kind of uh, uh, bullshit. So I'm so happy it's not going to happen. Yeah. Yes, that's how. That's how it is for me, Harry. What about you? Tell, tell, tell us about yourself as well, about Liverpool and how things are about that. Yeah, so I mean, from a Liverpool perspective, man, it was, like I said, yeah. uh, uh, I think the owners dragged us down. Uh, they embarrassed mm-hmm. the, the club and the traditions of the club. They betrayed the traditions of the club. We're very much a family-run mm-hmm. club. Uh, mm-hmm. It's, it's mm-hmm. I mean, our slogan itself is you'll never walk alone. Uh, yeah. Very much yeah. about community. Uh, that's what Liverpool Football yeah. Club has always been about. Uh, mm-hmm. So yeah, it, like I said, it was a betrayal of our values. I feel as a club and our traditions. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I mean, this not working out is credit to the fans. Like I said, Liverpool fans who took a stand, a strong stand, uh, but fans across the country who took a strong, a strong stand and across the world actually uh, that took yeah. a very strong stand as well. Uh, mm-hmm. I think the thing that really hurt was you know watching uh, the Leeds versus Liverpool game, waking up to watch the game and watching Jurgen yeah. Klopp, yeah. who had nothing to do with this, the man who actually brought glory to us, the man who we love as Liverpool fans, mm. having to face the media mm. and answer all these questions, having yeah, to face Leeds yeah. United su- supporters abusing him and the players, yep. uh, when yep. they had nothing yep. to do with this, they were not consulted about it, they were not spoken yep. to about it, they had no clue about it, they yep. were not in favour of this. Uh, but yep. they having yep. to face the media, which I thought was extremely mm. unfair uh, and wrong mm. from the owner's part, because there was yep. nothing else that yep. came out of them. And they got Jürgen mm. Klopp and the players to face... Uh, Face the abuse, really, which 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 was, I think, yeah. extremely unfair, and the questions from the media as well. Mm-hmm. So, uh, mm-hmm. but, the, but I mean, obviously, so it didn't work out. Uh, I think Jurgen Klopp made a stand. He said he was not in favor of it uh, during yep. the post-match interview. James Milner was fantastic, especially being a player mm-hmm. of a, of the club, an employee of the mm-hmm. club. He voiced his concerns, said it was something he didn't like and he didn't want it to happen. So that was fantastic. Mm-hmm. Jordan Henderson yep. was brilliant. Uh, Jordan Henderson should be the captain of England, uh, in my opinion, not Harry Kane. <laughs> He led all the captains <laughs> in the Premier League into an emergency meeting. He released a mm-hmm. statement saying he's not in favour of it and he doesn't want it to happen and he's united with the Liverpool fans. And he got mm-hmm. all the key players in Liverpool to release that same statement as well and share that on social media. So that was fantastic. This was even before Liverpool had pulled out. It was a strong stand yeah. by the players and led by our fantastic captain, Jordan Henderson. So that played a part. Yeah. I think the pressure from the players from the manager, from the fans, from key stakeholders, uh, eventually uh, made the owners of Liverpool cave in. 
right? Yeah. And, yep. and the other yep. clubs in England as well. I mean, to be honest, I was very, very angry with John W. Henry and FSG uh, yesterday. Uh, I still mm-hmm. am. Uh, the one yep. good thing he has done or the one small step that he has made at least to try and correct the situation, I think he's got a long way to go to win back the trust mm. of the fans. But one good thing mm-hmm. he's done is he's released a video this morning uh, John W. Henry himself, not getting one of his employees to do it, but he personally did it, apologizing to the Liverpool fans and saying it was all that's, his that's fault. Important. That's yep. very important. Mm-hmm. Taking, taking it all on himself, saying it was my fault. Yep. I made an error of judgment. It's not Jürgen's fault. It's not the CEO's fault. Yep. It's not the player's fault. I put them through the shame and I'm apologizing to them and to the fans. Uh, and mm-hmm. I know it's going to take time to win back trust, but we will do it. We will work together. So, it's a small step forward, but I think actions speak louder than words. He's apologized two or three Absolutely. times in the past uh, for making mm-hmm. mistakes. And I think it's too many mistakes as well. So now it's yep, all about yep. action speaking louder than words. He's got to, to put it into action, really do something, uh, for, uh, take a yeah. positive step uh, forward uh, in, in favor of the supporters and the club. Now, uh, from um, that's John W. Henry's perspective. I mean, they're fans, they're, they're pundits who are calling for mm-hmm. FSG out, for example, I think it's a load of bullshit and, and rubbish. Okay. Uh, mm-hmm. Because mm-hmm. I think uh, they saved us from administration when we were about to go broke with our old owners. They mm-hmm. have developed a sustainable business model for, for us when we were actually bankrupt. They have now turned us into a highly mm-hmm. profitable club all through our mm-hmm. own revenue streams. Uh, they've brought mm-hmm. us success. They brought Jurgen Klopp in. We can't forget that. They brought us success uh, as well. Mm-hmm. They've invested in the team as well. So we can't forget that. And at the same time, mm. if you want FSG out, who is going to come in now? The club, yeah, is, yeah. The, club <laughs> is worth, the club is worth, United is the same situation. Your club is worth two or yep. three billion dollars. Ours the same. Yep. In yeah. the pandemic situation, who is going to buy your club for two or three billion dollars, knowing full well that your club is running into losses, there's no revenue from, from, from yep. Uh, yep. supporters coming into the stadium. Supporters coming in. Who's yep. going to buy yep. your club? So I think it's a load of rubbish. He's exactly. taken a step forward. Yep. Let's not completely trust him, which we don't, but at least let's mm. all pull together and see what he mm-hmm. can do. You know, and yep. I think there's no point. It's it's going to be detrimental uh, for at least mm-hmm. Liverpool to be running this protest to call FSG out because it's not going to gain yep. anything. It's just going to, we're just going to lose from it as a team and mm. as a club because nothing's going to happen now. <laughs> Yeah, you see, you see, Harry, it's perfectly understandable. You see, if you're the owner of the club, you know, you you apologize, you know, you take the stand uh, and you admit to your mistakes. And that's the first thing you do. If, if, if you made a mistake, you admit to it. You know what I mean? Yep. But I don't see the Glazers doing that. Yep. Okay. No, that's, I don't that's, see... Yeah, that, that, I, that I agree, man. They're you bullshit. Know, yeah. They're, they're, they're bull. And, and, and it's not just about, oh, uh, Manchester United Football Club, uh, you know, being owned by these Americans. Yeah, if, if, if there are people that, 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 that own the club, Okay, I don't care from which nationality, which background you're from, but if if you take the stand, you know, you show you show us that you're worthy owners of the club, you know, you respect the football club, you do whatever it takes, uh, you know, that is important uh, for the fans, uh, yep. you know, then then definitely, uh, you know, you are worthy owners. And having said that, Harry, having said that, Harry, you know, I want to just talk about this. Um, I, I'm I'm I I just looked at the uh, whole. Uh, you know, the ESL, uh, the, the list of teams that were, that were supposedly participating, okay, yep. for example, okay. And and I realized that, you know, the Germans, the German Bundesliga teams, yep. okay, By did Munich, not even Borussia partic- Dortmund, yep. Yep. They did not even part- look to participate, uh, yep. you know, in the ESL. Because, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, Harry, I think it's because the, the structure of the Bundesliga and, of course, the clubs uh, in the Bundesliga, uh, they are all basically for the fans, by the fans, so to speak. Because uh, if I'm not mistaken, you know, uh, all those clubs are technically owned by these fans because they have a model where it's like 50 plus 1% for the fans. Yep. So technically speaking, everything goes through the fans' approval. I mean, of course, you do have uh, people running the club, but I think they pay so much of respect to the fans uh, and they know exactly what it takes uh, to be a successful football team. And it's not about money here. It's not about money. I think the most important point that the Premier League team should look at, or even other teams you know, who are thinking that it's all about money, it should not be about money. You got here because of your fans. And you will always be successful because of your fans. You take the fans out of the equation, you're going to be gone as, You're going to be gone as, you know. And that's what I hope the Premier League can do to change, uh, especially. And of course, I do hope other clubs around the world would, would also look at that as one of the ways to, uh, to, to, to maintain. No, you're spot on, right? Listen, I mean, if 
yeah. the clubs, if the owners had the decency to consult fan groups, yeah, some of the key yeah, stakeholders, exactly. the fans especially, then this would yeah. never have happened in the first place because the fans would have told him, told them it's a, it's, it's a, it's a ludicrous uh, project. Yeah. It doesn't make sense yeah. and we're not for this. And immediately they wouldn't have proceeded with it. So I think there's a learning from this for the owners. I mean, it's something they should know. So I'm surprised as smart businessmen, yep. but yep. Uh, yep. it's hopefully a learning for them and for Liverpool owner as well, John W. Henry, I'm speaking about here. Consult. Yep. You've got to yep. consult with your coach, your manager, with key stakeholders, your fan groups, your fans, yep. your supporters yep. before you take such drastic action. Because if they're not, the fans are not for it, the fans don't like it, it's not going to run. It's not going to move, yeah. right? And I mean, yeah, you brought the German model, fantastic. I mean, the German, uh, it's a law in Germany, right? It's a law that football clubs can't be uh, majority owned by, by, I mean, they have to be majority owned by the supporters. So 50 plus one rule they have. Uh, yep. 51% has to be majority owned by supporters. So it's the reason why uh, Bayern Munich and Borussia Dortmund didn't want to get involved in this, right? Because the fans will now be in favor of this. So uh, yeah, I mean, that's uh, that's spot on, man. And hopefully that's that's a model that England, I think that's what, when we look forward, that's a model that in, the English Premiership, English clubs, uh, uh, French clubs, Spanish clubs can take moving forward as well, where it's majority owned by, and, and specifically England mm. I'm talking about here, where it's majority owned by by supporters. I think that's what all supporters want uh, of, of, of Man United, Liverpool, all the other uh, major English clubs. So Absolutely. I think that's, Absolutely. that's what we have got to move yep. to. It's not going to happen overnight. But that's what mm. uh, we've got to move towards to avoid situations like this happening again, where owners can do whatever they want with the heritage yep. of our clubs. No. I have a quick question, Harry. I wanted to ask you on your opinion mm. on this. Uh, mm. Staying with the Premier League, right? And now yep. having said that uh, the six clubs have withdrawn from yep. the uh, Super League. But I just have this one burning question I, I just wanted to know. Um, now that you know, there's a lot of, uh, you know, of course, transfer markets going to happen, uh, if people are going to be uh, moving on and stuff like that. But what do you think is the perception of, of, of players, especially if they're coming from abroad, uh, to come into the Premier League, uh, you know, especially to clubs, the six clubs, uh, you know, like Man U, Liverpool, Arsenal, uh, Chelsea, uh, Spurs, uh, etc., etc. You know, when they found out about this and how the owners are actually running the clubs, uh, you know, do you think they would be attracted to take the step to come to Yeah, I mean, uh, that's not going to make any difference, to be honest. At the end of the day, it's over. <laughs> okay. They're out of it. I think if they were still in the ESL, yeah. it would make a difference, but they're out of it now. Yeah, uh, It's not yeah. going to make any difference. From what I heard, UEFA is not going to put any sanctions as well. So at the end of the day, yeah. these are still yeah. the biggest clubs. They still pay the best wages. So the big, yep. I mean, the, the the top players will still want to play for this club. So as far as I'm concerned, that won't make mm. any difference, and and they'll still want to okay. move to the, to these clubs. But I mean, what are your thoughts? Okay. The broader issues, Ram, the broader mm-hmm. issues that are that are coming out of this. Uh, mm-hmm. I think that's what we've got to focus on. I mean, I mean, you you heard about the UEFA Champions League oh, format, yep. right? So listen, yep. I mean, this is my opinion, and I'm and I'd like to get your opinion on this as well. But this is my opinion. Uh, UEFA the Premiership, a lot of the other clubs in England as well, everyone started playing good boy when this was going on. The ESL was going on as if they were the, the, the best people on earth. They cared about the fans the most. It's all they ever think yep. about the fans and supporters. Yep. And I call bullshit on that, right? Yep. UEFA don't so give do a I. damn about the fans. Uh, yep. They don't give a damn about teams. They make the, I mean, the, I mean, the new format is uh, basically... Players have to play. Uh, I mean, they're going to be hundred uh, more matches in the new Champions League format, which starts in 2024. Uh, they're also a highly corrupt organization, and this has been proven yep. uh, as well. Uh, so, I mean, I'm not for UEFA because uh, I mean they've they've painted themselves as the good boys here, but I mean mm-hmm. I, I think a lot of these issues stem from some of these organizations, yep. some from some of these associations. Yep. I mean, I give you a good example, right? UEFA established uh, the FFP, the Financial Fair Play. Now, Liverpool, Liverpool's owners, John W. Henry, the reason why they bought Liverpool in the first place was because they knew FFP was going to kick in, right? Mm -hmm. So that's the only reason they bought Liverpool because they said, okay, with that in place, we can compete with the big clubs like Chelsea, with Man City, because these guys have very rich owners and they are Mm -hmm. basically owned by countries. Uh, So the only Mm -hmm. way we can compete if this law comes in and it's enforced, we can compete because it promotes sustainable uh, sustainable uh, businesses, sustainable income, businesses, right? Yes, yes. So yes. how FFP works, if everyone knows, what you earn is what you can spend, right? Yes. So what you earn through mm-hmm. revenue streams is what you spend. Now, UEFA have yeah. not enforced that. They clearly nope. not enforced that, right? Man City nope. were in breach of, of all these uh, FFP regulations recently. And what happened? They were mm. let off scot-free. It didn't go anywhere, yep. right? So, yep. I mean, 
I think a lot of, and this is my opinion, I think one of the reasons why these clubs jumped into uh, setting up uh, a European Super League, especially the Spanish clubs and uh, the likes of Liverpool and Manchester United, is because they needed to compete. They're going through a pandemic now. They're heavily in losses. They can't compete with clubs that are owned yeah. by countries who are not really affected as much by the pandemic, yeah. who will spend big again this summer, the likes of Man Correct. City, Chelsea, PSG, for example. So they wanted to join a European yep. Super League where they could make a lot of money so they can compete with these clubs, right? To stay on an even footing in a way. So yeah. I think a lot of this stems from UEFA as well uh, and their regulations. I mean, you talk about mm -hmm. uh, the likes of, for example, uh, some of the smaller clubs in the Premier League. I mean, listen, I mean, not good boys. Mm -hmm. Everyone thinks about themselves at the end of the day, right? I mean, only last yeah. uh, season yeah. Yeah, uh, when, when the pandemic hit, uh, and Liverpool were going to win the title, there were clubs at the bottom of the Premier League who were asking for the Premier League to go null and void and deny Liverpool yeah, the title yeah, or deny, yeah, or deny yeah. Leicester, who were at that time in third or fourth place, to qualify for the Champions League just because they wanted yeah, to yeah. avoid releg relegation. So you can't tell me they've yep. not been selfish and thinking about themselves. So everyone thinks about themselves. Yep. What, yep. what these clubs did was absolutely wrong. What these owners did was absolutely wrong. But mm. uh, like I said, I don't think we've got to let UEFA off and, and some of these associations off as well. I think there needs mm. to be reform in the game and it has yep. to be made across, uh, across the board. Uh, mm. So, yeah, I mean, that, those are my thoughts on, 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 on it, basically. And those are some of the issues, I think, that need to be mm -hmm. worked on moving forward to avoid situations yep. like this happening again, but also to iron mm. out all the other issues in, 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 in the footballing world. What about you, Ram? What do you think? Yep. Hari, I think I have to go exactly what you said as well because, uh, you know, I, I agree with you. FIFA Fair Play was just, I think it was just like a canvas, you know, yeah. that was being put forward. Uh, you know, it was not really something that was 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 so-called enforced, like what you said. Yep. It was all a marketing gimmick to me, yep. uh, you know. So, so clearly, yeah, you know, having said about talking about like teams like PSG, Chelsea, who are who are actually owned by you know billionaires of, of from different countries who are not affected by the pandemic so 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 to me to me although i do respect i do respect the fact that you know uh they own these clubs but yeah to me it's not being enforced so you know a lot of other teams are not going to be able to benefit you know from fifa fair play you know uh because of their financial situation so to me the way i look at it is okay lah, you know you 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 are a big club you have a lot of money all right you know, it benefits me. You know, it yep. benefits UEFA. So okay, I mean, they make you know, they no make problem. money from the Champions League as well. They yeah, fill they their make lots as well. of money. So, yeah. Yes, yep. yes, of yep. course. So, so that that's basically what's what what it is right now. So I mean, you you say, I mean what, if you think, I mean, you think about it. I mean, UEFA yeah. were thinking about themselves as well. I mean, they said, yeah, you yeah. know, that the, the smaller clubs are going to get affected. They were thinking about themselves. The Champions League, these yeah. clubs pull out of the Champions League. Champions League is their cash cow. They don't make money yeah. again. Who's going to watch the Champions yeah. League? Uh, exactly. You know the the broadcasters, the broadcasters yep. who 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 televise the Premiership, for example, are thinking about themselves mm. as well. Because if mm. these clubs join the Super League, the Premier League is devalued, and that's what they're selling, yeah. and that's what they're broadcasting, right? So everyone's thinking about themselves. It's all about the money. No one's a good guy yep. here. And I think yep. now that the ESL has been sorted, I mean, if they if they actually put fines on these owners, sanction some of them, I think it's well yep. deserved. But now we've got to yep. iron out some of the other issues as well. To, to avoid situations like this happening again, those are yep. my thoughts. And the basically. only good guys, the the only good guys I can think of are the fans because yep. they really love the club. Uh, you know, they really love, uh, you know, what they stand for. Uh, yep. You know, they they protect the club overall. But uh, unfortunately, these dirty games, uh, we are not going to see. Uh, we are not going to see it fade. Hurry, uh, to be very honest, it's just going to be even more in the future. But the the way I look at it is, let's let's hope that there could be someone or some different governing body that thinks there's a way to curb the situation, iron out situation, so that, uh, you know, it becomes that beautiful game that we love all over yep. again. That's, yep. that's, yeah, that's basically a, what I'm hoping that's, for. That's a great way to end the episode, man, Ram. We all want our beautiful yep. game back. It shouldn't all be yep. about the money. Uh, it should be about the fans and what they want. Exactly. Uh, yep. And I think that's mm. what we've got to work towards, you know, uh, like I yep. said. So hopefully the bodies come together. Uh, hopefully some laws are passed about mm governance of football clubs, you know, in terms yep. of who can yep. buy football clubs, really going yep. through a stringent governance process, making sure in the future that there is a percentage mm -hmm. share that's given to the supporters in the club, hopefully a majority, but let's see if we can work towards something like that. Uh, and that will mm -hmm. avoid situations like that. I mean, at the end of the day, mm -hmm. with foreign owners coming in, they're all treated uh, like a business. Unless, of course, yep. 
unless of course you you know you're the Qatari owners of of uh, <laughs> of PSG or Abu Dhabi owners of yep, Man City yep. then of course you've got endless wealth and it's almost like a hobby and you want to win things because you've got so much money but if not everyone yep. else treats it as a business right so i think mm. uh, there's a, it's, it's it's highly important that you know there's some regulations put in place but i mean um, guys yep. it's been fantastic let us know what you yep. think as well we want to know your thoughts yes. about this it's been a small victory but it's a long way to go uh, and let's work towards uh, towards that as well i mean ram you're a happy uh, man would I'm a very very happy man Manchester United fans out there please please share with us your thoughts about Woodward no longer in the driving seat uh, in United you know let's hope for a better person so yeah let us know what you think we are so excited to read about it and yes indeed this has been an awesome awesome show hari we are so happy end of the day <laughs> very very happy guys signing off from the plot for the fans this is the show this is a for the fans by the fans and it's all about the fans come on it's all about the fans yes take care you. cheers cheers. cheers cheers cheers